Hello everyone, this is Iran Talk and in this video I'd like to talk about white nationalism and specifically focus on their association with Nordicism. In other words, the primary objective of this analysis is to prove that white nationalism, specifically their association with the Nordicist movement, is completely flawed when it comes to understanding the genetic ethnogenesis of ancient civilizations and cultures such as the ancient Iranians of Central Asia and of the Iranian Plateau. It is also worth mentioning that often these claims to Iranian civilization are accompanied by a great degree of hatred for modern day Iranians which is quite remarkable and shows how much hatred for Iranians there is among some white nationalists and white nationalist circles. This phenomenon is further compounded by the fact that some Iranian nationalists or so-called Iranian nationalists such as Jason Reza Georgiani sport these ludicrous claims regarding Iran's ethnic and genetic origins without any valid genetic, cultural as well as historical evidence. For this reason, some Iranian nationalists without any valid or justifiable reason act against the national interest of Iran. In fact, the national interests of Iran are one of the most interesting things that these nationalists fail to realize and do not grapple and that's very unfortunate because whatever they do is against the soul and heart of the Iranian people and the Iranian nation. Now the primary objective of this analysis will be to take a look at the ludicrous claims made by Georgiani in regards to the genetic heritage of the ancient medieval and modern day Iranians and there will be a focus here on proving the ethnogenesis of the modern day Iranian population in light of their ancient ancestors. While I have covered this topic on my channel on many occasions, I think this will be the most in-depth and open refutation concerning the claims made by white nationalists as well as deluded Iranian nationalists regarding the ethnogenesis of the ancient as well as the modern day Iranians. Also, there will be a thorough analysis of Nordicism in this refutation. I will also discuss a bit about the origins of these claims and why they are so popular in some white nationalist circles. Overall, I feel that Iranian nationalists as well as European nationalists can collaborate with one another, but before that can happen, there needs to be an appreciation and understanding for the culture and civilizations of both of these great nations. Before I begin the analysis, I just like to say that some very reasonable white nationalists have come to the conclusion that the ancient Iranians from Central Asia as well as those of the plateau were not Nordic or white because of their significant Middle Eastern BMAC ancestry and 10% East Asian ancestry and one of these individuals is Thuletide. Thuletide is a European nationalist who is very active on Telegram and from this post you can see that despite him once believing that the Sogdians, the Wusun, the Bactrians and other similar Indo-European peoples to be genetically white, he believes now that they were not white but rather they were mixed with Middle Eastern BMAC farmers and East Asians meaning that he believes that the ancient Iranians and the ancient Aryans responsible for the great Iranian civilization were not genetically akin to Europeans. This is groundbreaking and what it means is that there are white nationalists out there who do not accept the belief that the ancient Iranians were a Nordic population but rather they have admitted that they were a mixed population between Proto-Indo-Iranians who were mostly of Nordic European or European descent and the indigenous BMAC farmers as well as additional ancestry from a Siberian East Asian source. And I hope that most white nationalists can do the same. Now without further ado I'd like to get into the analysis. To begin my refutation, here is a map made by my friend Son of Manu. So you can see that there is the Andronova culture which encompasses most of Central Asia. Then there is also the BMAC or Oxus civilization and the Yaz culture. What is unfortunate to bring up here is that many white nationalists forget that the peoples of the Bhima culture played a crucial role in the ethnogenesis of the early Aryans and this has been validated by many recent genetic studies which have been provided in the description. So I actually made a video on this recently and it's attached to the top right here. Please watch that video and as I proved in that analysis, there was a merging between the Androno culture as well as the BMAC civilization to form the Yaz culture. So I'll revisit some of that data in this analysis though obviously with newer evidence and prove that there is indeed a process of hybridization and acculturation between the Androno culture and the indigenous farmers of the BMAC culture. And crucially this hybridization led to the formation of the Yaz culture. 
It is also worth mentioning that these indigenous BMAC farmers were very much genetically akin to the indigenous Iranian farmers of the plateau. Though keep in mind that these peoples did not speak Indo-Iranian languages as those came from the Aryans, nonetheless these cultures were crucial and integral to the formation of the ancient Aryan Age Iranians and later the modern day Iranian people. And thus, because of this hybridization, the ancient Aryans from Central Asia as well as from Iran could not be considered to be a purely Nordic or European population and were a hybridized population between the indigenous farmers of the Bhima culture again and the incoming proto-Indo-Iranians. Now, as many of you may know, these Aryans migrated from the Anvirans of the Yaz culture to the Iranian plateau sometime around 1500 to 1000 BCA to form the great ancient Persian and Median civilizations. And this is well illustrated by this map by son of Manu as well. And you can see these are the approximate locations for the Median and Persian civilizations. And what's also interesting is that when these Iranians who were already admixed with the indigenous BMAC element migrated to Iran, they further admixed with the indigenous Iran Chalcolithic population. Thus, the ancient Iranians had even more Iran Chalcolithic ancestry than the Central Asian Aryans, which is quite interesting and remarkable. What you'll be able to see is that later on in this analysis, the Iran calculated component forms a major part of the Iranian genome, being greater than 50% in the majority of Iran's population today. Thus, the Median and Persian migrations to the Iranian plateau raise further questions for white nationalists and Jason Raza Georgiani as well as other deluded Iranian nationalists when it comes to the ethnogenesis of the modern-day Iranians. For these reasons, this map is critical to understanding the origins of the modern-day Iranians. What many white nationalists fail to realize is that these indigenous BMAC farmers were very close to Neolithic Iranians and played a crucial role in the ethnogenesis of the majority of the Eastern Iranians as well as the Iranians who migrated to the plateau of Iran. So you can see here that the Turkmenistan Iron Age sample is at least 25% Neolithic Iranian though the BMAC proportions are much higher as Neolithic Iranians were not the exact same population as the BMAC culture, though nonetheless they were closely related. It is worth mentioning, however, that the BMAC people did have a bit of Anatolian as well as Caucasian undergather ancestry alongside their Neolithic Iranian related ancestry. Now what's evident from this chart that's here is that you can see that the ancestry of the Turkmenistan RNA sample, the Kongju, as well as the Saka Masagutai population as well as the Sarmatian, these populations unlike the Eastern Scythians or the European Scythians had significant amounts of BMAC ancestry which is quite interesting and remarkable. Again, you can see that these populations were clearly hybridized and thus for this reason they were not purely of European or Nordic stock but rather they were mixed between the indigenous Iranian farmers of the BMAC culture as well as the proto indo iranians and a bit of East Asian population sources as well. As this analysis progresses, you'll see further discussion of this process of acculturation and hybridization. Now regarding the genetic origins of the Srubnaya population, which is believed to be the ancestral population to the Indo-Iranians, you can see they were on average 70.6% Indo-European steppe, 18.8% Neolithic Anatolian and 10.6% Western hunter-gatherer. What you can see from these results is that the Srubnaya population was a European population and was descended from the three populations ancestral to modern day Europeans. What this means is that the Srubnaya as well as the Sintashta and Androno steppe populations were a northern European population. Now regarding the ethnogenesis of the indigenous BMAC populations, you can see they were on average 9.6% Bronze Age steppe, so they did have a bit of Yamnaya ancestry, 13.8% Caucasian hunter-gatherer, 0.8% Indian hunter-gatherer, 10.6% Neolithic Anatolian, 63.4% Neolithic Iranian, and 1.8% West Siberian hunter-gatherer. Overall, as you can see, these results are indicative of the largely Iranian farmer descent for the BMAC population, meaning that these populations were a part of the larger indigenous Iranian populations. Now, as I progress through this analysis and refutation, you'll be able to see that these indigenous BMAC farmers admixed significantly with the incoming populations of the steppe, such as the Androno, Sintashta, and Srubnaya peoples. 
Moving on, here we have a map and this is the location of the Avastin area. So you can see they were very much located over the environs of the Bima culture which is very interesting and these ancient Aryan civilizations can be creeped to be a Western Aryan and later on in this analysis I'll present evidence from this region and prove that these populations were also significantly Bimakai for which reason they were not genetically akin to Northern or Nordic Europeans. That's essentially it for this phase of the video. In the next phase of the video, I'll be taking a look at the claims made by deluded Iranian nationalists such as Jason Reza Georgiani as well as white nationalists. As you'll see, these claims largely revolve around the misconceptions surrounding the ethnogenesis of the ancient Aryans and the beliefs that they were largely genetically a Nordic population. In fact, this myth has been promoted by Jason Reza Georgiani many times as well as by white nationalists also many times. And in fact, as many of you may know, Giordani has promoted this myth many times in his works, including his uh, appearances on Red Ice TV as well as for TheAltRight.com. As evidence, here is the first of the articles Giordani wrote regarding the genetic origin of the ancient as well as the modern day Iranians and it was titled Against Perennial Philosophy. As you can see in his article, Giordani put forth the claim that the Arab Muslim invasion was bad but once this was compounded by the genocidal Turkic and Mongol conquests of Iran, a demographic shift took place that deprived Iran of the genetic basis for the production of a Hegel, Nietzsche or Heidegger. And as you can also see here, it's interesting that he mentions how these men are less than one in a million, even in a genetically pure Aryan population. And then he just uh, goes on towards the end to say that it would be possible with the right uh, leadership and government planning to restore the pre-Arab, pre-Mongol genetic character of the majority of the Iranian population within one or two generations. And then he says that he's sorry about this, but this is what needs to be done to make Iran great again. Now what's interesting is that Giordani presented these claims without any actual evidence concerning the genetic origins of the ancient Iranians as I'll show in this analysis they had significant indigenous farmer ancestry including the Aryans from Central Asia. I am specifically referring to the Bimakized Aryans. Moving on you can see that in the exact same article Giordani put forth the bold claim that prior to the Arab, Turkic and Mongol conquests of Iran, in other words, up to the end of the Sasanian period, the majority of Iranians were genetically identical to Europeans and he claims that although some of them had mixed with local non-Aryan Elamites and Assyrians, this was more than compensated for by repeated southward mass migration of northern Iranian tribes such as the Scythians and Sarmatians who he believes to have looked and thought like Germans. Regarding the ethnogenesis of the Scythians and Sarmatians, I've attached a video to the top right here which takes a look at the genetic origins of these populations, particularly the Sarmatians and even they had around 15-20% to BMAC ancestry as a recent study proved. The study in question was titled Ancient Genomic Time Transact from the Central Steppe Unravels the History of the Scythians. The abstract is also here so if you'd like to pause and read you can do so. Now regarding the findings of the study, you can see here the highlighted portion says the proportions of this ancestry increased through time and space. So this is referring to BMAC ancestry, a negligible amount in the most northeastern Aldi Belt 700 BCE group, 6% in the early Tasmola group, 12% in the Pazric Barrel 50 BCE, 10% in the Sargit 300 BC, 13% in the Saka Tian Chan population and 20% in another Saka population from the Tian Chan from 400 BC. And what's interesting is that the Sarmatians also required 15 to 20% of this ancestry while carrying less East Asian as well as more steppe ancestry. So what this means is that genetically this study validates that even the Sarmatians received significant amounts of BMAC ancestry. Sorry, I had to paraphrase towards the end there, but nonetheless, the study proves that the Sarmatians were indeed a Bimakized population and had significant amounts of indigenous Iranian farmer ancestry. Thus, these findings largely refute the claims made by Georgiani concerning the ethnogenesis of the ancient Aryans, particularly the Sarmatians. Moving on, another claim made by Georgiani was that Rumi was white and he actually released a video with Red Ice TV in which he claimed this but nonetheless that will not be featured here though I've linked a couple of videos concerning that to the top right here. 
Now to get into the gist of the article, what Georgiani claimed towards the end was, Rumi was white and so were Persians and all other Iranians before being colonized, genocided, raped and plundered by Semitic Arabs and Asiatic Mongols and Turks, half-savage peoples who parasitically appropriated the greatness of ancient Iranian or Aryan civilization in the name of Islam. Thus you can see Georgiani promoting the Nordic myth and while I agree with his stance on the appropriation of Iranian civilization by the Arabs and Turks, I nonetheless disagree regarding the ethnogenesis of the ancient Iranians and whether or not they were actually genetically akin to Europeans. This sort of anti iranism and Nordicism or European centrism was not only promoted by Georgiani as it's also appeared in the Daily Stormer. Now as many of you may know, the Daily Stormer is actually a white nationalist outlet which promotes hatred towards other races and peoples of other ethnic groups, which is very interesting. A pertinent article here regarding the Iranians was titled, 2000 year old ancient underground city discovered in Iran. In this article, you can see that the claims are made that this uh, city was somehow a product of European heritage and Indo-Aryan civilization. And then another claim is made and it states, we need to remember this as part of our white heritage and stop allowing the sand people to claim it. Thus you can see that Anglin promotes the same sort of ludicrous nonsense concerning the ethnogenesis of the ancient Iranians and their origins and he goes as far as claiming that this heritage belongs to Europeans. And then towards the end of the article you can see Anglin makes the claim that this is no different than allowing American Negroes to say we was Kangs and built the pyramids. Iranians were white all the way up to the Arab Islamic conquest of Persia and they were certainly white when they were building these awesome underground cities and developing the code of law which came to be known as white Sharia. My genetic analysis on the modern day Iranians will largely refute these claims. Now this sort of Nordicism was also promoted in Georgiani's monograph Iranian Leviathan. In Iranian Leviathan, Georgiani put forth a series of ridiculous claims. The first was the Western Iranians who established the Median Kingdom and then the Persian Empire were simply domesticated versions of these ferocious Nordic progenitors. So he's suggesting that the ancient Iranians were largely Nordic in origin. Moving on, you can see that in the exact same Monograph Georgiani claimed that the Nordic Aryan elite of genetically authentic Iranians which formed the Achaemenid Empire after an original migration and then successive waves of uh, Scythian invasions of the Median Kingdom and which was replenished by the Parthians may have only consisted of only 10% of the population of Achaemenid, Parthian and Sasanian Iran. Now what you can see here is that Georgiani is promoting the same ridiculous uh, Nordic myth which is very interesting. Georgiani goes on to reject the evidence that I will present here proving the process of hybridization between the indigenous BMAC farmers and the incoming proto indo iranians as he states that the Aryans migrated to a point west of the BMAC culture known as Hyrcania but what's interesting is that even Hyrcania was inhabited by Iranian farmers as my previous analysis on the matter proved. Even if the Aryans bypassed BMAC, they nonetheless would have picked up similar ancestry from the Hyrcanian region, so Georgiani was refuted in this regards as well. Now moving on, you can see here that Georgiani is calling for eugenics in Iran, and you can actually see right here, he also says that in order to make Iranians great again, the Ta, Talish, as well as the Kurds need to replace the Iranian genome. But what's interesting here is that modern Iranians actually have greater genetic continuity than the Kurds and Azerbaijanis who are also just largely another Middle Eastern population and not a Nordic or European population. Thus once again Georgiani is wrong to claim that these people are some sort of European remnants in the Middle East whereas my analysis will disprove these claims. And finally, this was not solely restricted to Georgiani's LARPing in his various monographs and articles and even in his private life, he openly espouses these views going as far as saying that very few Persians are genetically Persian anymore. That's why Kurds and Azeris are much purer Iranians genetically and he also goes on to say that real Persians actually burn badly and turn pink in the sun, been there and seen it, small villages around Yazd and Isfahan. This evidence comes from a leaked conversation between Georgiani and a friend of mine. 
that is pretty much it for this phase of the video and as you saw white nationalists and Iranian nationalists such as Georgiani are largely diluted when it comes to understanding the ancient ethnogenesis of the Aryans so the next phase of the video I'll be presenting genetic evidence to refute these claims. Again, I'm not referring to all Iranian nationalists but rather the diluted ones such as Jason Reza Georgiani. Before I get into the analysis, I just like to say this is a very rigorous and well done analysis on the genetic origins of the Iranians so please stick to the end of this part. I will only be taking a look at the Iranian populations and not the Kurds and Azerbaijanis of neighboring countries since they are a bit more admixed and since they do not reflect the overall genetic character of the population residing within Iran. Though nonetheless, as many of my previous analyses have shown, they're very close genetically to other modern-day Iranian populations. And regarding this, I've attached my latest video to the top right here. Thus, without further ado, I'd like to get into the genetic analysis. Now, regarding the genetic ethnogenesis of the ancient Aryans, it was covered in a recent study released on Nature titled Genetic Continuity of Indo-Iranian Speakers Since the Iron Age in Southern Central Asia. Now the findings in this study are very interesting and they state uh, there was an admixture between the Andrino and BMAC populations in Central Asia of which 43% in this uh, early Iranian population was BMAC derived and 57% was from an Andrino source. So what this means is that there was indeed a product of hybridization between the BMAC as well as the incoming Proto-Indo-Iranians to form the early Iranians of Central Asia which is very interesting and these Aryans later migrated to Iran and spread the Iranic languages. Thus, these findings support the hybridized origin point for the ancient Iranians of Central Asia. Now, here is the source population that will be used in the first part of this analysis. So, you can see that there is a Surbnaya Alakul source, there is a Neolithic Iranian source, there is a Neolithic East Asian source, there is a Neolithic Anatolian source, a Neolithic South Asian source, a Neolithic Caucasian source, a Neolithic Levantine source, and a Sub Saharan African source. Though what you should keep in mind here is that the Neolithic South Asian source is not actually from the Neolithic but I do feel that it does represent the ancient uh, admixed Indus Valley civilization population that was an admixture between Iran Neolithic farmers and the natives of the South Asian region. Now here are the results that I've come up with for the early Iranians. So you can see there on average 58.1% Alakul Srubnaya derived which ranges from 37.8 to 73.4% around 20.5% Iran Neolithic derived. So they had significant amounts of this ancestry. Around 8.3% Neolithic East Asian derived, 2.4% Neolithic Anatolian, 2.8% Neolithic South Asian, 5.7% Neolithic Caucasian and 2.2% Neolithic Levantine. Thus, with these populations, you can see a clear hybridized origin point. So, despite mostly being of Srubnaya descent, they do have significant Neolithic Iranian, East Asian, as well as Neolithic Levantine and South Asian ancestry. So, what this means is that on a genetic level, these populations were around 30% non white, which is very interesting, around 30 to 35% non white, meaning that these were indeed a hybridized population and not a Nordic or European population, as many white nationalists claim. Therefore, these results prove the hybridized origin point for the ancient Iranians of Central Asia. And they also refute Jason Raza Georgiani's claims about the ancient Iranians as well as white nationalist claims as well. That's essentially it for this phase of the video. In the next phase of the video, I'll analyze the genetic origins of the modern day Iranians beginning with source populations dating back to the Neolithic. Thus, I'd now like to begin my analysis. Now just last year a very prominent study was released and it was titled The Genetic History of the Southern Arc, A Bridge Between West Asia and Europe. What's interesting to note is that this study contained many samples from northwestern Iran from the sites of Dinka Tape and Tape Hasanlu. Before I progress, I just like to say that the only flaw of this study was pointing that the Caucasian mountains presented the area from which the Proto-Indo-Anatolians as well as the Proto-Indo-Europeans spread and these later migrated to the steppe forming the Yamnaya culture. But what's interesting to note here is that it was not these uh, Caucasians that began the Proto-Indo-European languages but rather these began in Europe and this model is a bit flawed considering that it considers the eastern half of the Yamnaya people to be derived from Iran Neolithic and Iran Chalcolithic farmers as opposed to the Caucasian hunter-gatherers. 
What this means is that this study therefore rejects the hypothesis of the Aryans originating in Europe and this also suggests that Iran Chalcolithic, Iran Neolithic or a closely related southern Caucasian population was ancestral to Yamnaya whereas this is not true. Nonetheless, overall this study was groundbreaking and it did provide insights into the genetic origins of the Iron Age Iranians. So up next, I'll be breaking down these Iron Age Iranians as well as medieval and modern day Iranians using a calculator that I have devised. This calculator is a bit different from the calculator featured early on in this analysis. Here is the source population for the calculator in question. So you can see that there is an ala called Shubnaya component, a Neolithic Iranian component, a Neolithic Caucasian component, a Neolithic Anatolian component, a Neolithic Levantine component, a Neolithic East Asian component, a Neolithic South Asian component, as well as a Sub-Saharan African component. Moving on, here we have the breakdowns for the Iranians from the Iron Age. So you can see they're on average 17.2% Alakul Srubnaya, 35.3% Neolithic Iranian, 15.6% Neolithic Caucasian, 10.8% Neolithic Anatolian, 21.0% Neolithic Levantine, and 0.1% Neolithic East Asian. Thus, with these results, you can see a great degree of descent from a Neolithic Iranian source. Despite this, however, they do have elevated amounts of ancestry deriving from a Neolithic Caucasian as well as a Neolithic Levantine source, with around 17.2% of their ancestry coming from a Srubnaya source. Overall, with these results, what you can see is that despite these samples having some Srubnaya ancestry, they nonetheless were mostly of Neolithic Iranian and indigenous West Asian descent and they had very little ancestry deriving from an East Asian source. What's also interesting to note is that these Iron Age Iranians had a bit of Levant Neolithic ancestry as well at 21.0% and what you'll be able to see is that this Levantine ancestry is very similar to the proximal amounts that's found in modern day Iranians as well as other Iranian related groups such as the Kurds and the Azerbaijanis which is quite interesting and remarkable. Thus, these results prove an indigenous West Asian origin for the most part for the Iron Age Iranians. Moving on, here are the results for the modern day Iranians using the exact same source population. So you can see there on average 20.2% Alakul Subnaya, 36.7% Neolithic Iranian, 11.4% Neolithic Caucasian, 11.5% Neolithic Anatolian, 16.7% Neolithic Levantine, 2.1% Neolithic East Asian and 1.5% Neolithic South Asian. Compared to the Iron Age Iranians, you can see elevated amounts of Alakul Surubnaya ancestry as well as more Neolithic Iranian ancestry which is very interesting and you can see that the Neolithic Levantine ancestry is around the same range which again is very interesting and they also have minimal amounts of Neolithic East Asian as well as Neolithic South Asian ancestry. Thus overall these results prove that the modern day Iranians are largely of Neolithic Iranian descent and are largely contiguous though the only difference between them and the Iron Age Iranians is that they are more South Asian, more East Asian as well as more Alakul Srubnaya ancestry. Thus these results attest to the genetically contiguous nature of modern day Iranians. Moving on, we have the results for the Horasanis. So you can see there on average 23.8% Alakul Srubnaya, 29.9% Neolithic Iranian, 9.4% Neolithic Caucasian, 7.7% Neolithic Anatolian, 13.2% Neolithic Levantine, 5.8% Neolithic East Asian and 10.1% Neolithic South Asian. What's evident from these results on the Eastern Iranians is that they're mostly of Neolithic Iranian descent, though they have elevated amounts of Srubnaya ansari as well as elevated amounts of South Asian ansari when compared to the other Iranians. Nonetheless, you can also see very little ansari deriving from a foreign source overall. And again, they have elevated ancestral components which are higher compared to other Iranians. And this includes the Neolithic East Asian component, which is very interesting. Though nonetheless, as you can see, these results largely point to an Iranian origin for the Khorasanis. Now here are the breakdowns for the Iranians in Azad Mard's personal collection, including one sample set that I added personally. So you can see that the Alakul Srubnaya answer is at 18.2% and ranges from 14.0 to 22.0%. 
Then after that, you can see ancestry deriving from a Neolithic Iranian source that 34.7%, 4.3% of their ancestry is from a Neolithic Caucasian source, 11.9% from a Neolithic Anatolian source, 17.7% from a Neolithic Levantine source, 2.2% from a Neolithic East Asian source, and 0.8% from a Neolithic South Asian source. Overall, what is evident from these results is that on a genetic level, the Iranians in Azad Mard's personal collection again are mostly of indigenous West Asian descent, though again they have ancestry deriving from an Alakul Subnaya source at 18.2%. So much like the Iron Age Iranians and the other Iranians analyzed here, they are largely contiguous and this element only forms a minority of their genome which is quite interesting and remarkable. Thus what this means is that the Iranians of today are not a Nordic or European population and that the ancient Iranians were also not a Nordic or European population. Now here are these results for the Iranian Kurds. So you can see they are on average 19.2% Alakul Srubnaya, 34.4% Neolithic Iranian, 13.7% Neolithic Caucasian, 12.0% Neolithic Anatolian, 18.7% Neolithic Levantine, 1.4% Neolithic East Asian and 0.6% Neolithic South Asian. What is evident from these is all then as you can see most of their ancestry again is mostly from an indigenous West Asian source primarily from Neolithic Iran and then their Subnaya ancestry ranges from 15.4 to 22.6% and the average is 19.2%. Thus overall these results prove that on a genetic level the Kurds of today are not a Nordic or European population but rather they are largely an Iranian population. After the Kurds, the final population analyzed in this phase of the video are the Azerbaijanis. With the Iranian Azerbaijanis, you can see they are on average 17.7% Alakul Srubnaya, 27.9% Neolithic Iranian, 15.4% Neolithic Caucasian, 15.7% Neolithic Anatolian, 17.2% Neolithic Levantine, 5.9% Neolithic East Asian and 0.1% Neolithic South Asian. Now what's evident from these results is that on a genetic level, the Azerbaijanis of today have less Neolithic Iranian ancestry compared to other Iranians, more Neolithic Caucasian ancestry as well and more Neolithic Anatolian ancestry with around the same amount of Neolithic Levantine ancestry and elevated amounts of Neolithic East Asian ancestry which is quite interesting and remarkable. What's also interesting to note is that they have virtually no South Asian ancestry. Thus overall these results on the Azerbaijanis prove that they are largely genetically an Iranian population. Now before I conclude this phase of the video, I just like to say that these results refute your Jani's claims that the Kurds and Azerbaijanis are much purer Iranians genetically compared to other Iranian populations. Overall, as you saw, the Azerbaijanis and the Kurds are largely genetically very close to other Iranian populations. That's essentially it for this phase of the video. In the next phase of the video, I'll be using more approximal ancestral sources to detect the actual amount of genetic continuity that's harbored by modern day Iranians. This will be done using an updated calculator. Now without further ado, I'd like to begin the next phase of this video. Now here is the calculator and you can see that there is an Alakul Srubnaya source, an Iran Calcolithic source, a Kuraraxi source, a Macedonia Classical Hellenistic era source, a Late Antique Arab source, a Medieval Turkic source, a Medieval Mongol source, a Bronze Age South Asian source, a Modern Caucasian source and a Sub-Saharan African source. Now without further ado, I'd like to begin this phase of the analysis. Using this calculator, here are the results I came up with for modern day Iranians. So you can see their Alakul Srubnaya ancestry ranges from 9.0 to 20.4%. Their Iran Calcolithic ancestry is heavy and averages out to 54.9%. They are around 9.9% Kuraraxi derived, only 5.6% ancient Hellenic from the Macedonian classical era sample set, 4.9% late antique Arab, so minimal Arab ancestry, 3.0% medieval Turkic, 1.1% medieval Mongol, 6.0% Bronze Age South Asian and 0.2% Sub-Saharan African. Thus what's evident from these results is that on a genetic level, the Iranians of today are mostly of Alakul Srubnaya, Iran, Calcolithic and Kuraraxi's descent with minimal Macedonian, late antique Arab, medieval Turkic, medieval Mongol, Bronze Age South Asian and Sub-Saharan African ancestry. 
In fact, the three main components of Iranian ancestry here make up around 80% of the total genome of Iranians, meaning that there is at least 80% genetic continuity among the Iranians of today, which is quite interesting and remarkable. And what's also indicative of these results is that the foreign ancestry harbored by modern day Iranians is at a minimal, and this largely refutes the ludicrous claims made by white nationalists, and also the claims made by Jason Raza Georgiani. Moving on, here are the results for the Khorasani. So there are on average 17.8% Alakul Srubnaya, 43.8% Iran Calcolithic, 7.6% Kuraraxis Caucasian, 2.8% Macedonian, 2.9% Late Antique Air, 5.9% Medieval Turkic, 4.0% Medieval Mongol, 14.0% Bronze Age South Asian, 1.0% Modern Caucasian and 0.4% Sub-Saharan African. Thus, what's evident from these results is that these samples are also largely genetically Iranian, though nonetheless they have more ancestry from a foreign source, particularly from a South Asian and a Sub-Saharan African source. So again, their step ancestry is elevated here. And what's also interesting is that they have elevated East Asian ancestry as well, with less Arab as well as less Greek ancestry. So overall, what this means is that genetically, the Khorasanis are largely contiguous, though they have more foreign ancestry compared to other Iranians. Nonetheless, these results largely refute the myth of miscegenation among the Horasanis. The next population analyzed here are the Iranians from Azad Mard's personal collection. So you can see their Alakul ancestry averages out to 11.1%, their Iran Calcolithic ancestry is at 51.1%, and their around 15.4% derived from a Kuraraxi source. And again, their Alakul ancestry averages out to 11.1% and ranges from 34 to 17.8%. Overall, you can see that the three main components make up close to 80% of their genome. Then you can see that the Macedonian classical ancestry is at 6.5%. The late antique Arab ancestry is only at 5.2% and does not exceed more than 10 in any of the samples. There are around 4.2% medieval Turkic, 0.6% medieval Mongol. And then you can also see there are around about 4.6% derived from a Bronze Age South Asian source, 1.2% modern Caucasian, 0.2% Sub-Saharan African. Thus, with these results, you can see that the Iranians in Azad Mard's personal collection, including one sample set of my own collection, are largely genetically contiguous, though they do have more Caucasian ancestry compared to the other Iranians analyzed here, and around the same amount of foreign ancestry. Now, up next, we have the breakdowns for the Iranian Kurds. The Iranian Kurds are on average 14.2% Alakul Srubnaya, ranging from 11.2 to 16.8%, 46.0% Iran Calcolithic, 22.1% Kuraraxis Caucasian, 3.8% Macedonian, 6.6% Late Antique Arab, 1.1% Medieval Turkic, 1.4% Medieval Mongol, and 4.7% Bronze Age South Asian. Thus, with the Kurds, you can see a great degree of genetic continuity and only minimal foreign ancestry. And again, their continuity is around 80 to 85 percent. Finally, the last population to be analyzed here are the Azerbaijanis. So you can see they're on average 7.5 percent Alakul Surumnaya, which ranges from 2.2 to 9.8 percent. 35.0% Iran Calcolithic, 24.3% Kuraraxis Caucasian, 14.1% Macedonian, 5.3% Late Antique Arab, 3.6% Medieval Turkic, 6.5% Medieval Mongol, 3.2% Bronze Age South Asian, 0.3% Modern Caucasian, and 0.1% Sub Saharan African. Overall, what you can see with the Azerbaijanis is again, they're mostly from Iran calcolithic farmers as well as Kuraraxi's population with a bit of step ancestry. Though, nonetheless, you can see elevated amounts of Macedonian as well as medieval Turkic, medieval Mongol compared to the other Iranians analyzed here. For this reason, the Azerbaijanis are less contiguous compared to the other Iranian samples analyzed. That's essentially it for this phase of the video. In the next phase of the video, I'll be taking a look at a Western Aryan ancestry that's harbored by modern day Iranians using the two samples we have from Sir Karakad and Rabat. These sites are in Uzbekistan, and what's interesting to note here is that these samples are very close to the homeland of the Western Aryan that's presented in a map early on in this analysis. Here is the map again, and you can see that this is the homeland of the Western Aryans, and this is from where the samples were from, particularly from the location of Aryanam Vaija. As many of you may know, the name Aryanam Vaija refers to the homeland of the Aryans. 
These samples were from a study titled Genetic Continuity of Bronze Age Ancestry with Increased Step Related Ancestry in Late Iron Age Uzbekistan. And you can see that the abstract is here as well. So if you want, you can pause it and read it. In fact, the abstract argues for the process of beam accusation in Central Asia among the ancient Iranics. Here are the sites in question, and you can see that these samples come from Rabat, Dehkan, and Sir Karakar, which are located in the heartland of the Western Aryan homeland and also the heartland of the Parthian homeland. So these samples are very much reflective of Parthian and of Western Aryan genetics, and perhaps also Kushan genetics as well. Here is a PCA, and you can see these are Western Aryans cluster in between the Ganjdara farmers as well as European populations, which again is quite interesting. Thus, you can clearly see that the Western Aryans were a hybridized population between the Indo-Europeans as well as the Iran Chalcolithic and Iran Neolithic farmers. Thus, these results prove the process of beam accusation in Central Asia among the ancient Aryans. Now, using the calculator presented at the beginning of this analysis, you can see that the Western Aryans from Rabat and Sir Karakad are on average 43.4% Alakol Srubnaya, 27.7% Neolithic Iranian, 4.0% Neolithic East Asian, 7.1% Neolithic Anatolian, 2.8% Neolithic South Asian, 8.8% Neolithic Caucasian, and 6.2% Neolithic Levantine. Thus, much like the ancient Central Asian Iranians taken a look at previously, these populations were also largely Bimakites, proving hybridization between the Proto Indo Iranians as well as the indigenous Bimak farmers. Now, up next, I'll be using these samples to break down modern day Iranians based on their approximate amount of descent from these Avastan Aryans. Now, this will be done using a new calculator, which here you can see consists of an Avastan Aryan source an Iran Chalcolithic source, a Kuraraxi source, a Macedonian classical source, a late antique Arab source, a medieval Turkic source, a medieval Mongol source, a Bronze Age South Asian source, a modern Caucasian source, and a Sub-Saharan African source. What's interesting to note here is that these source populations are similar to the ones that are used breaking down the same populations through the Alakul Srubnaya source as the main source for Proto-Indo-Iranian ancestry. Overall, with this calculator, you'll be able to see that modern-day Iranians have significant Western Aryan ancestry. Thus, without further ado, I'd like to begin this phase of the analysis. Up first, we have the breakdowns for the modern-day Iranians. So you can see their Western Aryan ancestry is at 34.6%, their Iran Chalcolithic ancestry is at 39.4%, and they're around 8.8% derived from a Kuraraxi source, which overall these three sample sets account for around 80% of the population of modern-day Iranians. Then you can see Macedonian ancestry at 6.8%, late antique Arab ancestry at 5.0%, 0.4% medieval Turkic ancestry, 1.0% medieval Mongol ancestry, 3.7% Bronze Age South Asian ancestry, 0.1% modern Caucasian, and 0.2% Sub-Saharan African ancestry. And what's interesting is that the Western Aryan ancestry ranges from 17.8 to 45.4% and is a significant part of the genome of these Iranians, which means that modern day Iranians have significant Western Aryan ancestry. And again, you can see that the foreign ancestry is at a minimal. Thus, these results are evidence for the genetic continuity that's harbored by modern day Iranian populations. Up next, we have the breakdowns for the Eastern Iranians. So you can see they're on average 41.5% of Western Aryan, which ranges from 334 to 50.4%. They're 26.2% Iran Chalcolithic, 2.4% Kuraraxi, 3.8% Macedonian, 4.0% Late Antique Arab, 3.1% Medieval Turkic, 3.6% Medieval Mongol, 11.3% Bronze Age South Asian, 3.8% Modern Caucasian, and 0.4% Sub-Saharan African. Thus, with these results, you can see a great degree of genetic continuity as well and elevated amounts of Western Aryan ancestry with less Greek, less Kuraraxi, less Arab, and around the same ancestry derived from a medieval Turkic as well as a medieval Mongol source with elevated Bronze Age South Asian ancestry and a bit of modern Caucasian and Sub-Saharan African ancestry as well. For this reason, you can see that the Khorasanis also have a great degree of genetic continuity. Now moving on, here are the breakdowns for 
the Iranians from Azad Mard's personal collection. So you can see they're on average 28.0%, a Western Iranian 38.5%, Iran Calcolithic 14.6%, Kuraraxi 7.0%, Macedonian 5.2%, Late Antique Arab 1.4%, Medieval Turkic 1.0%, Medieval Mongol 2.8%, Bronze Age South Asian 1.3%, Modern Caucasian and 0.2% Sub Saharan African. And you can see that the Western Iranian here ranges from around 17.2% to as high as 37.6%. So it is a significant part of their genome. Therefore, you can see a great degree of genetic continuity harbored by these Iranians as well. Up next, we have the results for the Kurds. So you can see they're on average 31.6% of Western Iranian, which ranges from 244 to 36.2%. After their Western Aryan answer, you can see they're around 32.2% Iran, Calcolithic 19.8%, Kuraraxis 5.0%, Macedonian 7.9%, Late Antique Arab 0.3%, Medieval Turkic 0.8%, Medieval Mongol and 2.4% Bronze Age South Asian. Thus with the Kurds of today, you can see a great degree of genetic continuity and a bit less foreign ancestry compared to other Iranians, though nonetheless they also have less of Western Aryan ancestry as well. With these results, you can see that the Kurds of today are largely genetically an Iranian population, though with elevated amounts of Caucasian ancestry. Finally, the last population data set analyzed here are the Azerbaijanis. And as you can see overall, their Western Aryan ancestry is at around 18.1% and ranges from 10.4 to 26.2%. They're 28.2% Iran, Calcolithic 21.5%, Kuraraxis 14.9%, Macedonian 5.6%, Late Antique Arab 1.5%, Medieval Turkic 6.9%, Medieval Mongol 2.0%, Bronze Age South Asian 1.1%, Modern Caucasian and 0.1% Sub Saharan African. Thus, the Azerbaijanis of today are largely genetically an Iranian population and these are Iranian Azeris, though they have elevated Caucasian, Macedonian, as well as elevated amounts of medieval Mongol ancestry and less Bronze Age South Asian. Thus, overall, with the Azerbaijanis, you can see mostly Iranian ancestry, though they have more East Asian ancestry, as well as more Caucasian and Hellenistic ancestry, which is quite interesting and remarkable. To conclude, this analysis served as the ultimate refutation of the claims made by white nationalists as well as deluded Iranian nationalists such as Jason Raza Georgiani in regards to the ethnic and genetic origins of ancient and modern-day Iranians. In fact, using the latest available genetic evidence, it was proven that modern-day Iranians are largely genetically akin to the ancient Iron Age Iranians and also that the ancient Iranians were not a pure European or Nordic population but rather had significant amounts of Iran Neolithic ancestry as well as a bit of East Asian ancestry as is the case with the ancient Aryans from Central Asia. Thus with these results it was proven that the Aryans of Central Asia had a significant BMAC element which is very interesting and also that the modern Iranians are largely descended from the ancient Iranians, particularly the Aryans as well as the indigenous Iran Calcolithic population. In fact, modern Iranians also have minimal foreign ancestry, especially minimal Arab as well as minimal Turkic and South Asian ancestry and are largely a three-way admixture between the steppe population or even the Avastan Aryans, the Iran Calcolithic farmers as well as the population related to the Kuraraxis culture. Thus, the ancient Iron Age Iranians were never Nordic Europeans and Iran throughout history was never largely populated by Nordic or European populations and also that the modern Iranians are largely descended from the ancient Iranians. That's essentially it for this analysis and refutation. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.